I'm Sensei Michael. Welcome to a 6Q Greenbelt Solo Kumite practice class. In this class, we're going to get started with a nice warm up and we're going to move into reviewing and practicing the Kumite from this belt level uh, in a solo format. So, even if you don't have a partner, you can still get really good, uh, useful repetition in with me today in this class. We're going to get started with our warm up. We're just going to do shoulder rolls first. Rolling our shoulders forward right now. We're going to do a few rolls and then we'll be doing some Pilates style exercises to work out our legs and core in a moment. Let's go the other direction. Okay, let's do hip rolls. Roll your hips one direction. Other direction. All right, great. So we're going to get down on our hands and our knees. First is going to be back kicks. So we're just going to kick straight back with one of our legs. I'll do my left leg first. Kick straight back. This is actually a really good way to practice Ushiro Geri because the technique is very much the same, but you don't have the issue of worrying about your balance. We'll use the other leg now. It's so like whenever I'm teaching Ushiro Geri, the first thing I ever do is get everyone on their hands and their knees and literally practice this. And you can really do a similar thing on the wall by putting your hands on the wall as well. But those are the first things I ever do when teaching some of those kicks that are harder to do because of balance. We're going to do what's called fire hydrants, just a ridiculous name, but um, you can lift your leg out to the side. You can call it an outside uh, leg raise, whatever you want to, but we're just going to do those. Raise the leg to the outside. Works just the inner thigh pretty well, actually, and the outer thigh. It's a good exercise because we don't tend to use those muscles as much or work them as much. Other side. It's like yesterday I was doing a forearm and grip strengthening workout, which is just something that people usually gloss over. When you consider general strength training routines, and these are muscles that are very useful, martial arts. Okay, next one's going to be leg raises. So we're going to just have one leg straight back and then raise it up. Staying with me. We're getting about 10 reps in for each of these. As long as you stay with me the whole time though, I just wanna make sure you're moving. Okay, we'll go to the other leg now. Okay, yeah, great. We're gonna go on our backs. Do some Pilates core exercises. First one is called toe taps. Toe taps, just bring your legs up there at a 90 degree angle. Do your best to keep that angle and just slowly lower one foot to the ground. Just tap the ground. Lower the other foot to the ground, tap it. That's it. Just keep alternating. You have to keep that nice 90 degree tabletop position. Imagine someone could place a tray 
with food and drinks on it and everything and it not fall over when both uh, legs are up in the air. That's what's required for this to really engage the core. It's a pretty safe core exercise. It's not that high impact. It's the thing I do like about Pilates exercises if you're going to integrate them in sometimes. Okay, the next one's called heel returns or foot returns. What we do is we start in that tabletop position and then we extend one leg out, bring it all the way down to the ground, hover the foot as you pull it in. Other side, out, hover the foot, almost just kind of dragging on the ground and you really bring the heel all the way to your body. And then you reset, so it's here. Like you're making a gigantic bicycling motion. Keep it going. Nice range of motion. It's a pretty slow movement, which creates more pain on purpose. And don't let your foot rest on the ground when you're doing this return motion here. Just hover it, barely tap it or drag it. We're just gonna do a few more. And last one. Okay, let's come up slowly. Totally getting the burn going in the core and the legs a little bit making the rest of our workout and practice even more effective. Last is going to be boxer shuffle. You're just basically bouncing around on the balls of your feet. Um, it's just a final kind of loosen everything up. Get the blood flowing right before we get into our kumite section. Make sure you're breathing. Okay hey guys, feeling pretty good. I'm about to get started with the kumite section. If you need to take a quick break, keep it very minimal. Otherwise, we'll move right on. So for the first part of our class, we're gonna work on Ipan Kumite Ichi from this belt level. If you've done any of my previous solo kumite practice classes, we're gonna do a very similar format today. We're going to do the kumite two times slow to really fill the muscle movement align our body properly, and then we're going to do it five times at normal speed. That just means putting out a lot more intensity and, and effort. I call it full speed as well sometimes. And then we're actually going to flip it and switch and work the exact same kumite on the other side. So rather than always practicing it, stepping back and with one side and one arm dominant, we're going to do the opposite side so we, we also get a balanced practice on that side of our body today. Okay, The keys to solo kumite practice are making it real by visualizing an opponent and really visualizing that attack's coming to you. So if they're throwing um, like a jodan level oizuki or they're throwing a churan oizuki or whatever the attack is, imagine it's about to hit you. You have to get out of the way, you have to block it in time or you're going to get a very dangerous blow uh, to your head or to your body or whatever it is. You can't just practice lackadaisically, you know, oh yeah, there's no one here today. Of course, we can go slow and things like that, but make it as real as possible. That's gonna make your muscles tense up more when you actually do the blocks and the strikes, and you're going to train uh, at a higher level and just get much more out of it. So that's just my recommendation there. Um, so we'll get started. The first one, I have my attacker and uh, I have an incoming uh, I've got a Churan level Oizuki on this one. And what we do is we step to the outside. We do Uchi, Uke. Then we do Nizuki. Newashigari. Okay, so you should know this already, right? We've already learned these in the level. Now it's more about practicing it. We're going to do it two times slow.
Okay, now we're going to do our five at normal speed. Let's get some good practice in. We're going to be calling the numbers out so that you can stay with me. Ichi. Knee. Son. Up. Yon. Up. Go. Up. Focus and recharge. We're going to do the opposite side now. Okay, so we have the uh, incoming punch now coming in on this side uh, with, from the attacker, which would basically be their left arm. Step to the outside. Uchiuke. Knee. Zuki. Mewashigeri. Disengage. Okay, in our fighting stance, we're prepared. Uh, we don't always just like immediately step back. We tend to disengage after a ipan kumute. Do that again two times slow now. It's uchiuke, ni zuki, mewashigeri. This is the uh, kumute that we might have to make an adjustment step depending on how close we are to their body. Stepping back just a little bit to land a good mewashigeri. I'm kicking to the solar plexus. This could definitely be done to the solar plexus. To the groin, you could even be kicking to the head or to the knee. But I'm actually focusing it there. You can kick where it makes sense to you. One more time slow. And we have our five now. Ichi. Knee. Hup. Son. Hup. Yon. Hup. Go. Now we'll move into Ipan Kumite Ni. Now in this Kumite, we have an incoming attack. It's still just a Chura no Ezuki. We're going to actually do an Ure Uke. And we actually step past the opponent's incoming leg. So I'm going to flip it around just so you have a different perspective this time. But we have to use good imagination and visualize this. We have the incoming attack, which is the, most likely the right arm coming towards us. And what we do is we're going to have to clear past that leg. We can't just step across. There is a foot there. So again, it's about visualizing the attack properly. We have to have a small step over as we do ure uke. Ure uke. And that's going to set us up in a unique position. We're right next to their body. Uh, from here, we're actually going to continue the rotation this direction. Impi uche. We've got our supported elbow strike. A second supported elbow strike to the ribs. Stepping out. We've got yoko geri ke komi. Just total obliteration of the short ribs that we're hitting there um, after defending the incoming attack. We'll do our two slow. Ureuke and Piuchi. Piuchi. Step. Yoko Gere Kikomi. One more time. Slow. Remember, this is Kekomi, not Keagi. So we definitely want to have that big push extension rather than just a snap. Our five at normal speed. 
Ichi. Son. Yon. Last one. Go. Focus and recharge. Now as we're doing normal speed, it's your normal speed. You're, you know, more closer to full speed capability. You don't have to be moving as fast as I am. You might be moving way faster than I am as well. So this is a personalized training. The point is though, you're then executing it with force. Okay, my last time I did a solo kumite practice class, my forearms were very sore uh, the next day. From all, because in those particular kumites, we did a lot of oizuki and a lot of geranbari and ageuke, which tends to use those muscles a lot, which is the ones we just did. Don't use those muscles as much. Okay, we're going to go to the other side. So I'm going to totally flip it. Now we have an incoming punch coming from this side, uh, really to the center line, but it's more from like their left arm in this case. I'm clearing past the leg. Ureuke, I'm going to continue my rotation. Impiuchi, impiuchi, and then since I'm already on the side, I continue turning my body, stepping, yokogere kekome, disengage, and uh, hopefully the altercation's over, I'm able to get out of there. Okay, we're going to do two times slow. One more time, slow. Make sure and really turn all the way into the empty uchi. You don't want to cut it off short here. I mean, you've got to actually drive through the ribs as hard as you can. Okay, we're doing our five now at normal speed. Ichi. Knee. Son. Yon. Go. Okay, good job, guys. Does he find kumite? Ni. Now it's time for sanban kumite ichi. Sanban kumite ichi, this is three step sparring. So you, when you're working with an actual partner, they're going to be doing three attacks in a row. You do three defenses, and then you become the attacker. You do three attacks, and they do the three defenses. Okay, so in this case, you have an incoming Jodan Oizuki to the high level of your body, okay, maybe the nose, for example. And we're going to be blocking with Jodan Niuke. So Jodan Niuke is that double high block. We're going to do this out of Kakutsu Dachi, and then we're going to step back. We have another high attack, so we're going to step back. Another Jodan Niuke. And then we're going to finish with an Ageuke. And then Yaka Guzuki, being a reverse punch. Now after that then, we will actually become the attacker. We'll do it one time slow, then we're going to do this three times at um, normal speed. Rather than flipping then to the other side, we're actually just going to do it on this side uh, this time around. But of course we'll be doing the defender and then also the attacker. Okay. Not to mess you up too much, I'm going to turn and face this direction just so that you can uh, see a different side here. 
So we're going to begin. This is Sanban Kumuteichi. We're going to do it slow together. Okay, stepping back. Joran Niuke. Joran Niuke. Ageuke, now we're in Zenka Tutodachi. Kiakuzuki. Now we're going to become the attacker. We'll step back into a Geran Bare. And we would wait for the call. In this case, we don't have anyone yelling and calling us, so we'll just move forward on and do our, do our Jodan Oizuki. And we finish. Okay, good job. Now we're going to do that three times at normal speed. Sanban Kumite Ichi. Hajime. Hajime. And this is still Sanban Kumateichi, but it'll be the third run through. San. Hajime. Okay, good job, guys. We're going to move on to Sanban Kumute Ni. Now, in Sanban Kumute Ni, we're going to be defending Chudan level Oizuki. We're going to be doing Suru or Shuto Uke in Kokutsu Zachi. Shuto Uke in Kokutsu Zachi. And then also Uchi Uke in Zenkatsu Zachi to Gyakuzuki. I really need to keep practicing my Japanese pronunciation, but I'm working on it uh, as I do love uh, to speak in the Japanese language, especially when we're talking about our technique. So we're going to do this again. We're going to go slow together, though. Okay, so this time we're stepping back. Kokutsu Zachi, we're doing Shuto Uke. Okay, again. Stepping back. Okay, last one's going to be Uchi Uke and Zenkatsu Tadachi. Gyakuzuki. And now we become the attacker and we're doing Churan level Oizuki. Okay, great job, great job guys. So, so Tsuto, Tsuto, uh, inside out block, which is our Uchiuke, and then reverse punch, and then coming back with three lunge punches. We'll do our three times at normal speed. Sanban kumite ni. This is Ichi. Hajime. Hajime. Son. Hajime. Focus and recharge. Okay. 
Okay, guys, so shake it out a little bit. Getting a little bit tight, a little bit tired, maybe. We're going to do one more today. This is a bonus, Ipan Kumite. Uh, by bonus, I just, I just made it up on the fly, which anyone can do, of course, uh, with any of the techniques in the level, which is something you'll be doing when you get closer to like shodan grading anyway. But in this case, we're going to do uchi uke for an incoming churan level oizuki. Hey, now we're already set up and our body's turned, so we're going to continue it with our mewashi gere. Okay, this is basically what we did in Nippon Kumite uh, Ichi, but we don't do the Nizuki first. So it's just uchi uke, mewashi gere, ushiro gere. Really nice combination because the mewashi gere already turns your body and begins the rotation of doing a spinning back kick, okay, to the ribs. So I'll show you from my back to you the angle here. Just follow along with me. We'll step out with our left leg. Okay, we've got our inside out block. Round kick. Back kick. Okay, we're going to do it two times slow. Then we'll do it five times. Sure, I'll face this direction. Going slow. One more time, slow. The most important thing is setting up good placement from that round kick the mewashi gari to your ushiro gari. Step out wide enough, block the attack, kick, set down, kick, set down. You gotta block the punch though, or none of this really matters. Okay, five times at normal speed. Let's do a good job. Ichi. If you're having trouble doing that spinning back kick quick enough without losing your balance, don't worry about it. It's here. Set down, turn, look, bring up the knee, kick, set down. Do it in the steps. When you get better, you feel more confident in your balance, for example, you can then make it one kick. Knee. Sun. Yon. Last one. Go. Okay, we're going to go to the other side now. This will be our last Kumite of the class. Let's do a great job on it. We're stepping on the right leg now. Uchi uke. Mewashi Gedi with our left leg. Set the foot down. Turn. Right leg now kicks. The back kick. Ushiro Gedi. Let's do too slow. Five at normal speed. Ichi. Knee. Sun. Another thing you can actually do on this combination. Although we don't have a person here with us, you block the punch, you can nicely grab onto their wrist, grab onto their forearm, and pull them into the mewashigeri, let go, kick them off of you. This actually gives you a balance point for the mewashigeri, which is very helpful, and sets up an even better a final kick to the ribs or to the midsection. 
think we're on Yon here. Okay. Yon. Last one. Go. Focus and recharge. All right. As we're going to do a quick cool down, lower our heart rate a little bit, stretch out, just feel, feel wonderful basically, relax, comfortable. Okay, first thing we're going to do, take your right leg, cross it over your left, and reach up with your left arm towards your right shoulder. Stretching out the IL band. Other side, left leg over right, right arm up towards your left. Okay, we're gonna do a downward dog position. So just keep your heels on the ground, keep your feet flat on the ground. Walk your arms out and place your hands on the ground. Now walk out a little bit more and lower your hips, but don't actually just sit on the ground with your body. It's called up dog. Release the lower back. Go back to downward dog. And up dog. Okay, take your right leg in between your hands. And just have a deep lunge. Okay, raise your right arm up, which is the, uh, whatever leg you have out right now, put that arm up. Looking up as well. Okay, switch legs. Nice deep lunge. My right leg's out. Now I'm gonna bring my right arm up. Okay, bring it back. Now on your knees and your hands, we're gonna do cat-cow. So cat, curve your spine upward, like a Halloween cat posture. And then just sink and bring your torso downward and have the bend going the opposite direction out for cow your behind's basically gonna be sticking out on purpose. Cat. And then cow. Okay, sitting on to your heels if that's comfortable enough for you. Let's roll our neck one direction. Other direction. Take your right hand and push down against your left hand or vice versa. Pulling down, stretch out the forearm and the wrist. Other hand. Only go as far as is comfortable. I mean, it obviously should be slightly painful if it's a stretch, but just a little bit. If you want to take a moment, do some deep breathing. Just don't worry about anything. That'll be great. Otherwise, though, this class is over. Great job, guys. See you next time.